So this is my review of the 2020 Aprilia RSV4 1100 factory. It's my personal bike. So I bought this bike in April of 2020. So we're coming up on just about three years. And so far it has been pretty damn reliable. Now, as you can see, I am doing this review in the wet and cold. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my Kamimoto heated jacket. Perfect. Now, before we start this review, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, Kemimoto. This is a new heated jacket that I've been testing out for them. And surprisingly enough, this one does have CE rated shoulder and elbow padding. I used this jacket just the other day on my RC4 with just a t-shirt on in 45 degree weather, and it was freaking warm. Oh, this thing's getting hot. Let's cool it down a little bit. For 150 bucks, you get a waterproof, windproof shell. It even has reflective little panels. There's little latches along the arm for adjustability. And this hoodie behind me does catch air like a sail in the wind, but you can roll it up. All you have to do is pull on this button latch on the inside of the jacket and then roll up the hoodie. And on the back of the jacket, attach the button. Perfect. It comes with a 20,000 milliamp charging brick. It has a DC 12 volt, a type C and a regular USB. So it's pretty easy to charge and easy to use with other devices like your cell phone. Now this is still a $160 jacket, but it is heated for the winter and it is super lightweight. Now, if you do use the code ADOWOMOTO, you'll get this jacket for 120 bucks shipped to your door. It's definitely my favorite jacket right now because it is cold in the Pacific Northwest. If you are gonna ride this winter, consider this jacket. It's pretty sweet. Kemimoto, thanks for sponsoring today's video. Back to our review. All right, let's swipe the water off this bike and talk about the ergonomics. A lot of people think that because this is a tall motorcycle that it's a great bike for tall people, but actually it's not. I'd say if you're six foot and above, this is probably not the bike for you. I'm at five, five and I'm actually very comfortable on it. It kind of makes you think about the single seat thing, why they didn't put a seat on this bike, but there is an option for a passenger seat. But again, from the looks of it, this is a no passenger motorcycle and all pilot. Now let's talk about the foot pegs. There is no adjustability on the foot pegs themselves. Uh, there is a little bit of adjustability on the shifter and the brake lever. On the shifter side, I had to put an aftermarket shift lever because I went with the GP shift option. And for those of you who have never ridden a bike with GP shift, I'd say try it for two weeks. It's pretty awesome. And it makes a lot of sense after. All right, getting on the bike. Oh. Again, I'm five foot five. The ergonomics are pretty aggressive, just like any other super sport or super bike on the market. What I love about the Aprilia is I have never ran a tank pad. Because if you look at this lip right here, it is extremely aggressive. I mean, you could see how well your knee would lock onto this. That little lip just helps a ton. And again, I've never ran a tank grip or a tank pad. This Aprilia tank just works. And I know the 2025 Panigale V4 also has a new design, which is reminiscent of the old design of like the 1198s, 1098s, 848 tanks, which has a similar lip on the tank like this one. All right, looking down at the cockpit, it's not the biggest dash you'll see on any motorcycle. It's pretty similar to like a Yamaha R1 or the R1M. It does make it look a little bit bigger because of the shape. I know the newer ones, I think 2022 and above, they are now square. They're no longer this like triangle shape. Very easy to see your RPMs, very easy to see what gear you're in, and very easy to see how fast you're going. Below you have things like your traction control, your different modes, ABS, wheelie control, slide control, and most of that is controlled through a switch. Immediately one of the first things that'll catch your eye is this cruise control button. Now these buttons below the clip-on are pretty awesome. This can change your traction control on the fly, and you can also change the map mode on the fly using the starter button. Now this being a race bike, it does come with a lap timer, which you activate using this high beam headlight switch. Switch. The factory version obviously comes with electronic Olin suspension from the factory. So you do have these wires sticking out, which makes it look kind of weird at first, but you do get used to it. And every now and then I'll just have to push these things back in. Now while we're here, this switch right here for my turn signals uh, no longer works. I let one of the twins take it out for the test ride and he broke it. Not that I ever use it, but it would be nice to have a usable one. I think it's just just Aprilia's flimsy little controls. Okay, just from a visual standpoint, this one that I have is the 2020 Aprilia Pikes Peak winning edition, but the RSV4 actually never won Pikes Peak because the rules of Pikes Peak, especially like the factory bikes, they have to have handlebars. So the bike that actually won Pikes Peak the last bike, it was a Tuono V4. And it was in this traditional red, white, and green livery. So they did make a 2020 version of both the Tuono and the RSV4. This is the RSV4 one. There's a little sticker saying celebrating 54 world titles. Of course, you got the triple clamp that says factory and the carbon bits like these winglets, this front fender, this tank fairing, this seat and tank fairing. And I personally added this one. Now, if you live in the Pacific Northwest and you ride in the wet, 
or if you ever wash your motorcycle, these winglets like to collect water. I took this off the other day to do an oil change and I was shaking it around and there was still water in it. There's nothing special about these winglets. They are literally bolted on to this side fairing. So for all you guys screwing on or taping on winglets, hey, it's not any different than my RSV4. Now, one of the major complaints of this bike is the front end. A lot of people dislike this front end, hence why Aprilia now has LEDs. But personally, I do like this style. It screams Aprilia to me and it does have halogen bulbs on all three not very up to date considering the bikes that we have today let me show you something really cool with the wheels now the factory does come with the aluminum forged wheels and i've demoed this in the past this is my key and it doesn't matter how hard you try to scratch this up it just nothing happens I'll try it with this key ring. Nothing. Now, if you look on the AF1 Racing website, these wheels are made by a company called Malgatech, and I've Googled them. I cannot find anything about them. So if you know something that I don't, let me know in the comments below. So the brakes on this bike are phenomenal. These are Brembo Stilemmas with matching Brembo Master Cylinder. Of course, we have stainless lines and matching Brembo rotors. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but if I were to guess, probably like a 320 mil. Now, my favorite part is the rear brake system, not because it's also Brembo, but because it's an underslung caliper. It really makes removing this rear wheel a breeze. I mean, you can have it off in about two minutes. And on top of that, you could have it on in about 20 minutes. I've had plenty of videos where I show that. If you do get a chance to own a bike with underslung calipers in the rear wheel, it is a game changer. It's, it's fucking awesome. So I do have about 8,000 miles. Let's see how many exactly. 8,267 miles. I did buy this bike at 1,200 miles as a demo bike. A lot of people are always concerned about Aprilia's reliability, and that's part of the reason I bought the demo bike instead, because I knew it already had 1,200 miles. And typically, you can see some major signs of engine failure in the first few hundred miles. This bike hasn't had any major issues. The two that I have had is the typical leak from the weep hole. If you don't know what a weep hole is, it's an escape route for oil when your valve cover fails and oil starts to get into the spark plugs. It's a common issue with these Aprilias. I don't know how exactly assembled the valve covers at the manufacturing plant, but a lot of O-ring failures have failed causing a leak in the weep hole. So if you have one of these, keep an eye on that weep hole, keep an eye on like oil leaks that are coming from the top. Mine was covered under warranty. Now, the second minor issue that I've had, and it's also a common issue, is the sensor right in there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it sits under there. And it is my gear indicator sensor. It tells me what gear my bike is in. Sometimes when I'm in second gear and I put the bike in neutral, this neutral will stay in second. I've had some people tell me to pull it out and clean it. I was gonna have it replaced under warranty, but when I called the dealership, they were like, we don't have the part, but we do have a used one we can give you, or we can order it and it might take two, might take three months. And the dealership for me is an hour away. I didn't wanna be without my bike, especially during the summer drive an hour up, leave it overnight or two nights only for them to replace it with a used one and then drive an hour back up and then drive. It was just a logistical nightmare. So now it's just something I deal with. Now, speaking of dealers, dealer network is not a strong suit of Aprilia. If you are one of those people who wants to buy a motorcycle and requires a lot of dealer help, you may want to shy away from Aprilia unless you live like 30 minutes away. But again, parts are typically harder to get than say like a honda or a yamaha so that's something to take note of if you're trying to own one of these bikes now reliability wise this bike has been a freaking tank i've beat it up i don't know how many track days i've done how many canyon runs i've done this season alone and it has taken the abuse that i've been given it the only thing i've done this season is probably three or four oil changes and one tire change and that's because i like to eat up tires at the track but overall it has been a really reliable motorcycle now one of the things that I am going to change is I'm going to go to a full rear set because even though this is the smoothest quick shifter and auto blip I've ever used on any motorcycle, sometimes I do accidentally go into neutral when I'm going from second to first. But again, I think that's user error. When I'm a little bit more direct with my shifts, it works just fine. Super smooth. 
very, very smooth. One of my favorite things about the RSV4. I know for 2025, the new Aprilia RSV4 has 220 horsepower and about 92 pound feet of torque. I believe it's somewhere around 11,000 or 10,800. Now this bike has 217 horsepower and 90 pound feet of torque. Again, around the same RPMs. There's not a lot of differences between the 2025 and this one. Yes, the 2022 and up are more like a 1099 cc and this is like a 1050 but even those slight changes again didn't really make for big power changes now the power delivery on something like a v4 especially the rs v4 it is extremely smooth it's almost like riding an inline four just how smooth it is if you've ever ridden the crossplane r1 all the torque is down low and it feels like an on and off switch this does not it is controllable all throughout the power band in fact as you get higher in the power band it gives you more power but again that power is not enough to scare you unless of course you're coming from like a 600 or uh, an r3 if you will but if you're coming from something like the r1 where it's an on and off switch this one is super manageable another one of my favorite things about the rc4 a ton of power a ton of torque but also super user friendly now while we're still on our favorite things about the aprilia i love this master cylinder in the back not because it's brembo but because the brake reservoir is inside this master cylinder it's, it's integrated look at that you just unscrew this cap and then you can do your brake flush very easily there's no extra brake reservoir up here that looks very ugly with another line it's just right here. Now it is also important to note that Prilia has their own factory engine covers on both sides. Now this is plastic and I've heard of some people saying you gotta replace these for a different brand because the foam inside which is in between here when it gets wet supposedly damages the case cover. I'm not sure. I've pulled these out before. I've had no issues. Uh, just a quick tip if you are going to buy an RSV4 I would suggest doing a canister delete. If you don't know what that is that is part of the exhaust emission system. It is something you do have to get flashed out and shout out to the dealer here that sold me this bike. They actually had their own Aprilia flash that was approved by Aprilia. That's why I still kept my warranty but they did sell me this bike with the flash and an Akrapovich slip-on which is more of a three-quarter which which I'll explain in a minute but if you don't get rid of this canister this is a choke point for your whole bike essentially some people have had a lot of issues with their bike turning off or not wanting to start because of that clogged canister so if you have an rsv4 and you are going to get it you're going to get a flash get rid of that canister and again something cool about the rsv4 while we're here is this looks like a slip-on but it's actually a cat delete because on the aprilia rsv4 the catalytic converter is actually built in to the big old muffler so you don't really have to buy a full system. Something like this is plenty. Uh, the one bike that I'm thinking of is the S1000RR and the Yamaha R6. Both of those catalytic converters are built into the headers. So to get rid of them, to make more power, you have to get a full system. Again, RSV4, three quarter or a slip on is plenty. Okay, so something noteworthy about this bike is this is like a four and some change gallon tank. If you fill it up to the brim, this gas tank lasts forever. Again. I have a flash on my bike. I have a full exhaust, full exhaust. And every time we've been out to the mountains, I never get a gaslight. All my friends have gotten gaslight. My friend Abel with his R1M ran out of gas. The R7 is a tiny tank. Of course, that's gonna run out of gas. The Street Fighter V4 runs out of gas. This tank is not only massive up here, but it also goes under the seat. I feel like it's almost like an enduro tank. That's how big this tank is. Now, something that may or may not surprise you is this bike has very little storage, if any. Yeah, I don't know what you could fit in here. I can't even fit a GoPro. I can maybe fit some batteries, but nothing in here. This is not even, I don't know why. <laughs> this is not a storage. This is just a cover. So do you ever see those guys running socks on their brake reservoirs? Uh, that's because most brake reservoirs are clear. This one is actually smoked. Uh, essentially, it protects the fluid inside from getting baked by the sun. Nice touch, Aprilia. All right, so getting this bike track ready is pretty simple. Let me show you how to remove the mirrors. So there's two 10 millimeter bolts in there, and then you can just pull this cord out, and that is for the blinkers that, again, I don't use. And then this just pulls out. You don't need to add a block off plate. The fairing stays put, and after you remove the mirrors, it's ready to go. So how does the Aprilia perform at the track? It is freaking amazing. It feels like a BMX bike. Now, static, it's actually pretty damn heavy. But again, I think Aprilia got the wheelbase and the ergonomics just right that now 
we just have this BMX bike that you could flick around at the track and it doesn't feel like it's 400 pounds. Even in street trim, it feels like it's a 380 pound bike just because of how flickable this bike is. And on top of that, having the power delivery just really smooth makes this bike super easy to ride at the track, not just to ride at the track, super easy to ride fast at the track. Now the gearing on the Aprilia is actually on the taller end. Uh, first gear, you can get about 90 miles per hour. So riding this bike in the streets, all you really need is first and second gear. Now, would I recommend it as a street bike? No, it is uncomfortable. I'm five foot five. Yes, it is made for shorter, smaller people, but that's when your feet are up and you don't have to like do stop and go traffic or touch the ground, etc., etc. I've just gotten used to riding really tall bikes. I have clocked a bunch of miles on the street with this bike, but most of them have been like back roads where there's not a lot of stop and go. And if you do watch some of my movies, I do trailer this bike or truck it wherever I go. So it's not like I'm riding it from my house to the canyons. I'm usually trucking it to the spot and that's where I'm right. I treat the canyons almost like a track. It's fine for like coffee runs, but nothing I don't know. I don't think you could do long distance with this. I, I personally wouldn't. I really don't know why it has traction control, but it does. So there you go. About three years of owning this specific motorcycle and I've had zero issues. I did want to blow it up for YouTube, like ride it really hard and hope it'll blow up in normal conditions. Obviously I wasn't going to like redline the crap out of it, but it has stood up to all my views over these years and personally I have no issues with my RSV4 and I've heard stories from other people, but all I've done is oil changes, nothing major. I swapped out the pipe for a Leia Vinci and uh, yeah, took it to a bunch of track days. People who have issues with RZ4, maybe you're one of the unlucky ones, or maybe if you do get a chance, buy one that has already had some miles in it and you know, just works. Also, this V4 sounds way better than my old 2018 Ducati Panigale V4S. I don't know how the 2025 is gonna sound, but personally, this sounds better. I also think that the R1M Crossplane is the best sounding bike ever made. That's it.